In this section of primary lessons, we're actually desensitizing our birds now to various accessories in the cage that the birds will become very accustomed to, of course, because they will live in this type of environment for the rest of their lives as companion birds. Right. One of the most important we find for the health benefit is definitely to desensitize our birds and teach them how to drink from water bottles at a very young age. Right. Water bottles are very important, as you were mentioning, for health. Yes. They're a lot more hygienic than dishes. Yes. And um, they're also good because you can uh, measure the quantity that has been consumed. So for monitoring for the mm -hmm. health, this would be definitely a precious information that you would like to have. Mm -hmm. uh, even more so important when the birds are eating a base diet that is an extruded, uh, very important because the water consumption is going to be greater than if they were eat eating a seed-based diet. Right. And when they are young and they are weaning process, uh, it's something that in the past we weren't paying as much attention to, but now we know that the weaning success will be dependent as well on how fast the bird is learning to drink. Right. And this water consumption becomes ever so more important because our birds get uh, converted to being fed, uh, spoon-fed, and uh, granules much earlier than they used to because in the past we used to continue their syringe feeding of the hand feeding formula much longer right. and the large crop. Now we're all trying to uh, bring the size of the crop down, uh, make our birds drink a lot more, make them eat the granules, the pellets, the sticks much earlier. And so making sure that the birds eat a drink, actually a lot of water is very, very important. Right. You had mentioned the importance of them learning to drink, and that, that is extremely important because you can't just give them a water bottle and expect that they're going to be able to no, drink from it. No, definitely not remove the feeding dishes and the water dishes, the water dishes. Uh, when we're not sure that the birds are actually drinking from a water bottle. Right. Uh, yeah. Important as well is we, we don't recommend that caretakers do this when they leave the home exactly. for a prolonged period of time, whether that is a full day or uh, two days, you know, especially a full day I think is fine if you rely on a water bottle and it's okay. Uh, but for two days, we would normally tell people to add an extra water dish in there, just in case something happens to the water bottle. Right. And of course, uh, normal maintenance, you would want to be changing the water every day. Yes. Uh, you would want to be disinfecting it at least once a week. Definitely. And uh, you'd have to make sure that there's no food trapped in the spout to make exactly. sure that they have access to the water. At all exactly. Times. We, we uh, talked a little bit that we were going to explain how we actually train our birds to uh, drink from this water bottle, just like everything else. It's got to be fun. Uh, usually, it's, uh, it's done when the birds are actually walking on the ground, so they're very stable and we just present to them the water bottle after that we've actually used our finger mm -hmm. to allow some of the drops to come out and usually just playing with the water and making them realize that this is what's coming out of there it usually doesn't take much time for the birds to become very curious like you see here this mitred conure along with the others that are out of the picture scene but they are definitely there we're, we're having a lot of fun now taking turns to come and get the water coming out from, this, from the bottle that's right yeah, we did mention the importance of having, having two birds and how they can learn from each other. It's very important. Yes. Now, we've mentioned the importance of having our birds uh, learn to drink from a bottle, but there's always those special birds that I really like, especially se several species really enjoy dipping their food into the water dish. Mm -hmm. and, and that's okay, and it, it's especially okay if the birds never have access to any soft food as enrichment food. But there's definitely an importance that needs to be made if this is something we're allowing the birds to do, that they, we are changing the water dish very, very often. often. Because we all know how dangerous that can be for bacteria growth, especially if it's plastic. Right. So once again here, we're demonstrating how the birds are being trained to drink from a bottle with a glass, glass. water bottle from our living world collection. And this is a bottle that's very hygienic because it is glass. And so there's less bacteria that can adhere to the plastic. Yes, because the plastic can get scratched. Yes, it's very important that all water dishes or bottles be either ceramic or glass, mm -hmm. ideally. And this is what, or stainless steel, of course, that's mm -hmm. very important as well. Uh, another time when a, a water bottle would be very practical would be when you were going away and you're using a carrier. Yes, and so obviously this is a part of the primary lessons. We'll discuss how we're actually desensitizing our birds and making them comfortable being in a carrier, being transported from place to place. But definitely accessorizing the carrier with a bottle will definitely help, especially we, we, we tend to think about uh, carrier and transport for Canada, but in a lot of places around the world have to use transporters in the event of hurricanes and disasters. And so having our birds being in a transporter where they're actually used to drinking from a water can extend the time that these birds may have to be in that transporter in the event of an emergency. 
So it's definitely not something that is negligible, of course. So as we're speaking about desensitizing birds to uh, different accessories, uh, we're going to continue this conversation right now with speaking about desensitizing them to various types of perches, which might seem you know, a little obvious, but it's it not. Isn't. It's actually quite a little bit more complex than we originally thought it was. Right. Uh, very important when the birds are young, the first perch that they're usually desensitized to are the uh, row perches. Right. And this is done in the early parrot education in the first stage, where the birds are actually um, offered this perch on the bottom of their chick pen. Right. Um, throughout the progression of the stages where they develop more dexterity and assurance, then we're going to be elevating this perch to a higher level. Correct. Uh, very important that when they're young, they can actually bite on the perch to move along because they're not that confident with just their nails. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that they can bite. And so this is why uh, offering a Java or Manzanita perch, which is really good because it offers different sizes for their feet, so it's beneficial to their feet and prevents uh, their feet to develop arthritis because they're getting uh, var variants. Um, it is not a good idea to offer these perches to young fledglings because they have difficulty biting them. And they're very slippery. And they're very slippery as well. So this would be a perch that we would offer in the final stages, right. for sure. When there, of course, have been on natural perches, either safe maple or apple branches, which will also stimulate the chewing. The chewing, which is important because we don't want our birds to be born. We want them to chew, mm -hmm. and we want them to learn how to do this at a very, very young age. Uh, plastic perches as well, we use often because yeah. these are important to put uh, in a very strategic place. Yes, we would put them near soft foods. Yes, and so this is very important that the birds uh, become familiar to perch on different types of textures yes. as well because this can be enriching for them in the future, and also at different heights. So normally when we introduce a new type of perch, we're going to do it on the floor. Right. so that the bird is not afraid of it. Very important as well is that the bird learns how to perch and step up on a very stable perch. Mm -hmm. So either the bird learns how to step up on someone's hand, but it's also a very, very good um, gift that you can do to a bird to allow him to step up on a perch. Perhaps in the future there might be an emergency situation where the caretaker is not home. Exactly. And somebody else has to get the bird out of the cage. And they're not comfortable handling them, so a perch is ideal. Now, very important as well, when the birds are young, the perches are always stable. Mm -hmm. But as they become older and more confident, then the perches can swing a little. And exactly, like they would in the wild. <laughs> very important as well. Although the grooming utility perch, such as this abrasive perch that we see here, is not ever used at Hari, we still need to discuss why we don't use it with our exactly. fledgling birds. Well, one of the reasons why we don't use it is that we don't groom the uh, nails uh, at a young age anyway, so they don't require it to keep themselves secure and steady on yes. the perch. Actually, a lot of uh, manufacturers uh, fabricated this perch because with the intention that it would actually groom the nails, mm -hmm. and so the caretakers would not have to get that done. Right. But birds actually favor them even more so when the nails are excessively groomed. Right. And so this is a, a reason why, unfortunately, numerous breeders are still using them because the birds love them, they use them, and then often caretakers as well. Uh, and we definitely feel that this can cause uh, a health hazard and concern for our birds, especially for the future of their birds' he feet health. Mm -hmm. It can lead to severe pododermatitis. Right at a very young age and we feel it's definitely too abrasive. Right, and as our fledglings get older, we do desensitize them to nail grooming. Yes. So we would not need this to have their nails No, shorter. and they're going to be uh, perched on a cotton perches at first, mm -hmm. so they're going to be quite secure. Mm -hmm. And further to that, they will be perched on natural branches, right. which will also contribute to a little bit of the natural abras abrasion of the nails. And then, as you mentioned before, we're going to be desensitizing them to the nail file, mm -hmm. to uh, the, the rotary, tool. rotary tool. And so there is no real purpose why a fledgling would need this to feel securely perched at whatever age within the first year of life. I, I seriously don't believe that this is an essential tool to be added as an accessory to the cage. Right. There are other issues with this perch as well. One is that it's very unhygienic. Yes, So definitely. if you were to be putting it near, especially for a fledgling, when you're going to be giving soaked weaning granules, hand feeding for Not a great them. idea. No, because it's, it's impossible to clean. Mm -hmm. And definitely, as you mentioned before, when we're weaning our birds, sometimes it gets a little messy. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is definitely not, a, uh, it's very porous and it's definitely not a suitable perch for that type 
of uh, of uh, accessorization that we do with our young fleshlings. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it, there's a reason why we have it on the market, like we said before, because it's a utility perch and it serves as a grooming device. Mm -hmm. And so it must be removed and we place back into the cage periodically. Right. Uh, many caretakers like to put it in the door. In the door, yeah. And so the birds are not favoring it to sleep on it at night. Right, it's important not to put it in the highest position in the cage. Yes, and so we definitely are talking about this now because you won't be seeing it throughout all of our stages. We don't recommend the use for it during the fledgling age of our birds. Another important primary lesson would be visual enrichment. Yes. And uh, this is an interesting slide that we have up here. This is act an actual slide that we would have in our comprehensive guide. Yes. So it has the stage, it has the primary lesson listed, and... Um, and of course what we're trying to do here, which is actual enrichment. enrichment. Mm -hmm. um, it, people take it for granted that birds have learned how to look at televisions, or we don't even often question whether they have learned to listen to the radio. Right. But not because they're listening to it, that they're actually having an appreciative value to what they're looking at or to what they're listening to. So I think this is really important to, to try and help them do that when they're young. Yes. Of course, uh, during the uh, fledgling age, which mm -hmm. usually starts uh, at the third and fourth stage, they start to become more familiar to the sounds of the radio and the caretakers and other birds. Uh, the television is an, a very important tool to have in your fledgling mm -hmm. nursery or kindergarten exactly. because uh, the birds can actually learn how to uh, look at other birds in the wild. And also, if we're uh, very proactive, we can actually film our training sessions and then allow our birds to see other birds being trained with the same caretaker. So it can be something that can be easily done, uh, any breeders, I think. Right. And it's very important that we uh, look at the television with them and show them and what's in there. Yes. Yes, very important. And it's not just television and radio. We, I mean, there's aquariums, there's... Looking outside the window, uh, which is something that we don't want to take our birds outside for the first time. The first experience would be stepping out of the, of the house or the nursery and then this whole new world becomes apparent to them. It's kind of nice to get a little glimpse of it mm -hmm. uh, gradually uh, with the caretaker actually nurturing the bird because uh, sometimes it's not obvious but the, the wind and the trees can be a little scary. Yes. And so this is all a big window of opportunity for us to teach this. And I think it's the most pleasurable uh, part of the uh, early part education because we get to, to see the uh, individual discover this new world. And, and I think this is the funnest part of our job, basically as caretakers. Discussing primary lessons cannot go without discussing discipline. And this is something that is very important in order for us to achieve all the other primary lessons, but also for the bird to achieve a companion life that will be favorable. Um, everyone has discipline in their home, and the birds must learn how this works, because they are not born with this discipline. We need to be flock mentors and show them how this works. I'm sure some people would be wondering how these flighted birds are just sitting so quietly on their perches here. Yes, and this is not something that's easily achievable if we don't do a few steps prior to the training session. Exactly. Their energy has been expended at this point. Yes, it has been expended quite a lot because yeah. the birds have been exercised prior to this and we've misted them thoroughly. Mm -hmm. They've then had a chance to uh, have a, a basking light so that they can preen their feathers and get out all they're fun, but when they were getting misted, so they've expended all the energy. They've had a chance, like I said, to just chill out and preen themselves, and now they're ready to learn. It's a little bit like our children. We want them to get all that excess energy out before they have to sit down and focus on their homework. Exactly, and this is very important, especially for Amazons. Now, there's some species that are not as challenging, but for Amazon species, it's very, very important that this is done prior. The other important thing too that you can't see in this slide is that the birds are actually in front of another bird that's being trained, that will be trained on a training stand. And so this is very important that we use a fledgling that has more experience and has more discipline in order to show how this is done. So they're basically being spectators here. Right. A couple of other things we need to point out is one, that these birds are not hungry. No, very, very important because they're still fledglings yeah. and they would never be able to be educated being hungry. Exactly. Yes. And the other thing is the length of time that they would be 
in this training session. It's a very, very short. Yes. This, is, this is just a little glimpse of, of how they need to act as a group and they need to now uh, be a little bit focused and listen to us. Now there's a bird turned around here that's not looking at us, so we're definitely going to step him up right. and make him turn around because this is what he needs to do in order to be part of this flock. Right. Extremely important as well is that they are always supervised. Very important as well that they're supervised. They're still flight, fe flight feathered at this point. Yeah. Uh, most of these birds uh, could get themselves into trouble, especially if you don't have a very secure room. Mm -hmm. So this is important that we always have complete attention to these birds. And that usually for a large group of, of birds like this, we would not just be one caretaker. Right. Be more than one caretaker because they won't always, you know, understand what the word discipline means. And, exactly. and some of them like to get a little bit into trouble. So it's very important that we're more than one person in case we have to bring one back to the, 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 the learning desk, basically, right. which is what this stand is.